Hi everyone, I'm Tom. This is Quick Watercolour Birds and in this episode we're going to be looking at some beautiful colours with some lovely markings. Let's go. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. In this episode I'm taking another request. In fact, I've got a long line of requests. If you've got a bird you would like me to paint, don't forget to pop it into the comments. In this episode, it's gonna be a pheasant. So there's a lot to tackle in a pheasant. On first glance, we've got lots of really beautiful colors, which we wanna capture, lots of oranges, really warm browns, very vibrant colors, with lovely turquoises and even purples kind of creeping in there. But there's a lot of different markings, there's a lot of different areas, and what we wanna do in this one is take this very complex subject and turn it into a very quick, loose, splashy version of it, but one that kind of captures the essence of the bird without getting bogged down in the details. Don't forget, if you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. I've got loads more of these watercolour birds to come, plus loads more other watercolour videos. Don't forget to hit the bell to be notified of when they come out. Let's take a quick look at the drawing and then the materials, and we're just gonna get straight into the painting. Okay guys, so I'm using a slightly smaller pad than usual, but only about a fraction, and a 2H, an HB pencil, and a hard rubber. I kick off using the 2H pencil, which is slightly lighter, setting my parameters using the head as a rough guide to how tall and how wide the bird is going to be. We focus on the big shapes to start with, big simple shapes, working out roughly their proportion in relation to each other, so kind of the face, the head, the neck, and then the main body, and then we can start to stick the other smaller shapes on top of that. My mantra, as always, is simple but accurate, so we want nice accurate shapes that are well proportioned into each other, well positioned relative to each other using kind of horizontal and vertical marks to kind of get our bearings. Once I'm happy with all that, I go back in with a slightly darker pencil, the HB pencil, and I just kind of refine the drawing as I go to clean up some of the marks and then very finally I like to take my rubber and lighten all of the marks so that the whole drawing feels a little bit cleaner before we dive into paint. Okay so my colours starting at the kind of top uh, part of my palette are cobalt blue, lovely soft blue, kind of slightly purpley and probably could get away in this painting without it but it's a nice one to add to our mixes just to help darken them but it's not quite as punchy and powerful and sometimes overbearing as thalo blue which I'm going to use to create the lovely kind of turquoises and greens on the head and it's also really great when combined with a red to make our lovely rich deep darks. I'm going to use predominantly a quinacridone red which when mixed with the Aussie red gold is going to give us some really lovely warm deep brown colours. The pyrrole red is the warmer orangey one which is only really for the face. The oriolin yellow, I only add the tiniest touch of that at one point to the thalo to give us that beautiful green. They go really well together to give us cool turquoisey greens. And then the Aussie red gold is one of the main colours in here. However, I will say that although I use it a lot, you could very easily replace it with burnt sienna and a, a more vibrant warm yellow like new gamboge. You could use new gamboge with a little bit of quinacridone red in, or you could even use something like a cadmium orange and still have a warm yellow on there like the new gamboge. So there's ways around something very, very similar to Aussie red gold. I just use it as a convenience colour as you'll see, and I just really love it as a colour. Let's just dive into the painting. Okay guys, so I'm going to kick off with a little bit of Aussie red gold just to get the ball rolling and there's not a huge amount of white markings up here so we can just get away with a very simple approach here and I really want to just focus on getting that shape right that leads into there and trapping just a little bit of light on that front kind of edge there. And there's no markings down in here. And this is kind of usual kind of tea consistency to kick off. Um, might just hint at a few little markings in there. And we're going to bring that down into here. And I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go, if we're going to do it all in one pass or we're going to... Um, kind of work it in a couple of stages. It will always be a couple of layers anyway, but it's just the extent 
of those layers. So that's kind of just to get the ball rolling. Um, let's get some shapes down, get some colour down. I'm going to introduce a little bit of the Conacridone Red into the Aussie Red Gold and that's going to give it just a little bit more of a reddy tinge obviously and then we're going to come down here a little bit stronger consistency and I'm just going to drop that in but just at the bottom so just we're creating a little bit more variation of tone uh, or colour I should say and as a result just very subtle variation of tone and um, we're going to kind of bring that into there and then it gets much darker and much more and it's similar to Burnt Sienna, uh, so I'm going to put in a tiniest, tiniest touch of blue and the mixture is going to become a little bit deeper and I'm just going to find the rhythm to these markings. So they've got all these white bits on them um, and in the drawing I kind of hinted at where the rhythm of these markings is and then I can put the darker aspects of them on later. And then we just need to find how these tie together. So I want a slightly stronger consistency of paint so it doesn't bleed as much into what I'm painting or the area around it, I should say. And then some markings just there and just one or two there. Letting all of those colours just flow together because they're all in the same sort of ballpark. Um, just let that colour flow. It's got a lovely orangey colour to it up there and then once we've got this down then we can start to drop more colour into it if we want to. Let's just get that line really working and then what's going on with these feather markings here? They've got darker colours over the top but just anything to sort of loosely illustrate the markings but not get too bogged down in sort of perfectly representing them. Let's make that just a little bit more expressive, a bit more interesting. And then we want a bit more orange on the back there. So I'm going to come in with quite watery paint, but not sopping wet. And I just want to get more gradation of colour here. So I'm pushing the brush down. There's more orange in the mix, but I'm pushing it a bit lighter. Now uh, we're just going to tie some areas together just to keep the simplicity and then we can start to come into some much darker colour still while it's all wet. I'm not worrying about the green of the head yet. What we I want to just drop in some darker colours now. So more quinacridone red and a tiny touch of my phthalo blue which just helps darken the colour a little bit more. And now we've got this wetness to it we can start to push in some darker colours but I don't want to push everything too dark and we just start to hint at some of the markings on the feathers here. Something like that. Just keeping it really simple. And very quickly we've got something that kind of loosely resembles our subject and now we can begin to work in some darker tones. So where does it get darker? We want a lovely orange tone. Bright orange tone here but we could go a little bit darker here just to create some more form. So if we go a little bit lighter on the top and darker down that edge it's going to create the illusion of kind of form. And similarly over here if we drop in a little bit more dark on this side and we're starting to create a lighting story now, i.e. that the light is kind of coming from over this side and above somewhere. And that allows us to be better equipped to sort of make little decisions about where to push things darker and then it's now it's just timing. At what point do we go in and do we we show slightly darker markings. So let's go in with our Aussie red gold and a little bit of quinacridone red. This is more our sort of um, single cream consistency into an already slightly dry wash. And I'm just going to dot in just a little bit more tone and texture not so sure about this area and what to do with it so we're just going to drop a little bit more texture in there and then we've got kind of these funny little areas that I've sort of left white at the moment. Decide what to do with those in a sec. I think we can go darker over here and we can also begin to think about getting a much cooler colour. Let's get a nice clean cobalt blue. That's a bit of a grubby one. Maybe even give it a bit of a purple tinge. Let's use up some of this colour over here. I'm just going to drag it down now into here and 
nice and simple. Just let all those colors run. I'm going to bring that out a touch more. Wondering if that foot feels big enough. We could over exaggerate the foot maybe just a tiny touch. So let's bring the, the back spur out and come over here and just maybe get a bit of a, a shadow down. I'm not too worried about exactly what the shadow does. And I'm just going to drag some of this colour into our mixture and just very quickly, just very simple, quick feet, something like that, and maybe a little bit more shadow. And that's got a nice feel to it, nice and loose and fairly fresh. Uh, so we're going to come in now with some darker mixes. Got a few little oddities in places, but that's okay. Totally normal. So, canacridone red. That mix, that's canacridone violet, put in the wrong colour. Let's have a little bit of quinacridone red there. Okay, so what I want to do, just while it's, um, while it's still wet, I just want to drop in some more colour. And let's get a bit more of an expressive kind of feel to the, the movement. Um, don't want to go much darker than that. This has got a lovely kind of watercolour feel to it. And then we're just going to come in now with some stronger pigments. So cobalt blue and the quinacridone red. Mixed to maybe, let's try and get a double cream consistency. See, So it's much more paint and less water, kind of double cream. So it's still got movement to it, but it's not as watery as this. And then while this is still just a little bit wet, I want to work into it with some more expressive brush strokes and just create a bit more interest in this area and similarly just there create a bit more depth of tone and in here so these colors will dry slightly lighter but the more water is in the mixture the lighter they will dry compared to how we're putting them on so it's all about timing And he's got a lovely expressive feel to him already. I don't, I don't want to go in and kind of overwork the paint, so we're going to just finish off this little area here and let those colours run together. Just tie together some of these areas, not too much. Um, that's a bit of a straight line there, so let's just quickly work into it and make it something. Nothing wrong with a straight line, particularly. Just, um, especially in this case, we're going to get away with it, but I just want to break it up a little bit with some fresher kind of marks. And now really we just kind of let that area settle down, let it dry off, let it do its thing. Maybe don't like that light there, but we like the little one there. Let all the colours run together. I don't mind that the red and the orange from this has bled down into the leg and into the shadow. Really doesn't matter if some of the blue creeps back up into this area. It really doesn't matter. It all is just, for me, adds to the, the lovely nature of watercolour and the way that those colours flow together. And then what we've basically got, although I accidentally used a bit of quinacridone violet, which would have been the same as adding quinacridone red and my cobalt blue, what we've essentially got is a lovely light feel to the fresh washes, um, mostly using Aussie Red Gold and Quinacridone Red. And when I've wanted to go to the darker colours, just Cobalt Blue. And you can really keep it that simple. It doesn't need to be any more complex than that. So now we're going to, I think I'm going to work into the red of the head. And for this, I'm going to purposely use a, um, a different red. Going to come to my good old pyro red. Pyro red being the much warmer, more orangey red, and I just want to use that to bring a little bit of extra something into the head. So I don't want a cool red in the in the face, that kind of skin around the, the eye. I want that much lovely warm red, and we're just going to mix a nice and kind of neutral, fairly light tone, and I'm just going to lay it in there. And we're just looking for the simple overall shape. Don't worry if you get a few little whites of the page 
left for me that just livens it up it's got a nice it's got a good solidness to it the paint but it's not completely opaque and we're just going to leave a nice little light on the front there and then the shape is fairly abstract here and we there's a certain level of not needing to get it exactly right which is always fun and we can you know we could just leave it like that i've got the not the most attractive bottom part here so let's make that a more interesting shape just bring it around like that and then we want to create a little bit of tonal variation doesn't need to be anything too mad but just let's take some of our quinacridone red which is naturally darker give it a little bit of water so that's probably I put that on as maybe full fat milk consistency I'm now mixing something that is a similar consistency maybe drip kind of moving into single cream so just a little bit um, a little bit more pigmented and less water and I'm just going to drop that in there and it's just going to create ever such a slight kind of variation of tone and now we've got this big wet pool there we can just kind of do what we want with that I can move the paint around a little bit just play with it we've got a little bit of a rubber in there so pull that out and it just it just creates more variation in what could be a bit of a dull flat red area I've just sort of Kind of jazzed it up a little bit that's all and then that's it we don't want to do too much with it we leave it nice and, and fresh and light um, and then we're probably going to come into the head now what I don't want to do is paint the green and the blue and meet this orange because it will shoot into all of that orange and, and destroy it sometimes we want our colors to run together other times not in this case I don't want my yellows, sorry, my greens and my blues to kind of run together too much. So we're going to go to our thalo blue, much more vibrant turquoisey colour. I'm going to use a fair amount of water and I'm just, I'm just going to take a moment to make sure these colours don't touch. And then we're just going to do something like that. Remembering that thalo is an incredibly strong colour, so if it does creep into anything else, it's going to make a difference. It's not like it will just make a little difference, it's going to completely change an area. Um, so that's always what I try to remember. I'm dropping a little bit of my or uh, Oriolan yellow into it. Oriolan yellow is our kind of cool yellow. Don't need a huge amount of it in this painting, but it's just kind of there. I'm going to come around here, and actually, it doesn't matter if we go over that because we're going to going to go darker eventually and just break the brush stroke see if we can get a little broken brush stroke there and then we're going to just bring this color here and then rather than a straight line I'm looking at this particular reference photo and just looking for the sort of interesting markings that it kind of makes and now we just let all that color flow together and then I'm just kind of biding my time until I get too close to the red So if I hit the red too quickly, they'll kind of blend together. But if I time it right, we might get a nice little soft, uh, kind of a nice little soft mark or soft transition between the two colors. So coming to a more strong consistency of paint now. So there's just a little bit more control, holding the brush just that little bit lower down. And I really want to get that lovely shape here, that kind of interesting little shape of the neck. And again here, just a little bit more shape to neck and dropping some dark in. I'm just anything to get a little bit of texture. Um, and then if I bring this up to the red, the red is dry enough that we'll get a soft mark or soft kind of transition between the two. And they'll kind of blend together a bit in a nice way. And I'm not too worried if they blend together a little bit. For me, that just creates a little bit of unity in that area and here. I'm going to go a little bit darker there too. And that's not going to go too far. If you're worried about that going too far into each other, we've got a couple of options. One is we just go back in with our red while it's still while it's still kind of wet and we've got a bit of time. And you strengthen the red, which I'll show you. Or you, you can, there's various options. It depends how much you want those colours to, to kind of bleed. I'm going to go back to my red 
and I'm just going to hit that with a stronger red and actually used a blue to create a lovely dark red so you just you use the colors that are there to your advantage and letting all these colors kind of flow together and purposely getting them to flow together so we get a lovely soft edge in this area and then we'll just let the paint kind of do its thing so yeah the red's now kind of bleeding back into that area so we just don't worry too much let the as long as there's not loads of water kind of knocking about we're not going to get in too much trouble and as long as it's still wet when we're playing with it you know we're not going to get in too much trouble let's get this nice and dark up here just trap that there and I like the granulation we've got on that a little bit I'm just going to punch it a little bit darker to get a bit more light and that's kind of trapping the light and that's nice I like the way the red has bled into the turquoise again if you if you're really not happy with it just mix yourself a stronger consistency of the blue and just go back into it and reshape it a little bit there is a level of um, flexibility to watercolour any more than this and we'd, we'd start to get into the overworking stage but at this point it's kind of working and I like the way the two the two colours fuzz together it's a bit of a sharp line where the brush stroke is broken so I'm just going to go back in and kind of tease the paint to become less of a straight line and let it feel a bit more natural and notice how we perfectly purposely trapped the light on the back of the head with that little dark there now that's a perfect place to let this dry off I'd be really silly to go in and do any more at this stage and that's a great place for it to dry what I will do is I just want a little bit more shape to this bit here but I'm not really going into a wet wash I'm just adding to it and I could do this in the second half but just while I remember just want to do that feels a bit more natural all right guys that's a great place to stop that first pass on the painting all right guys so that's as good as dried off I'm really happy with how it's come out the aim here is to bring it to a finish but without kind of overworking it without adding too much detail because I like the kind of fresh feel but it needs a little bit of depth of tone it needs a little bit more light and shadow so where can we get that maybe some sharper marks as well just to bring it to life a little bit of dry brush work so really not too much at all we want to keep this very very simple one area that we can kind of add a little extra kind of punch to it is just in here we can cast that into shadow more to create a kind of stronger feeling maybe cast that into shadow and even create some some markings so this is just phthalo blue um, with a tiny touch of water it's maybe kind of double cream consistency and it's just allowing me to have a little bit more control and just kind of creating some sharp little marks to kind of counter and contrast all of the the lovely kind of wet into wetness and just dead simple like that nothing to it the only thing I did while that was drying off was add a tiny bit of Aussie red gold you could use orange you could use yellow with a touch of red very watery and I've just let it dry and that's given me the eye don't really need to do a huge amount around the eye we need to put the black of the eye in we could if we really wanted put a nice little marking in there just to make the eye pop uh, I'm gonna take the same approach with a little bit of dark just in there kind of coming up under the beak just to trap it a little bit more uh, maybe didn't get the shape quite right there it doesn't matter too much but that's it I'm re really trying to keep it very 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 simple so now I'm just going to mix a kind of a bit of everything with a bias towards kind of orangey a bit more red in there that's just going to give us a very neutral color and it's going to allow me to just come in and just create a nice little line for the beak there and then go in with a damp brush and I might just soften it down and create a bit more tone and I'm actually just going to use the pencil line and recreate that but with paint just to create a very very simple beak for me it doesn't need to be any more than that we we know what it is at this scale which is as I said just a little bit smaller than my normal scale we're just going to keep it really simple don't quite like the end of the beak that I just created there so a bit of kitchen roll 
pull it back out again it was too heavy too dark the shape was okay just too dark and the same with the eye I'm just gonna come in and we're just gonna create the, the simplest of eyes see if I can trap a little bit of yellow in the dark of the eye and maybe so he doesn't look quite so surprised we just get a little bit of a dark just in there as well and that's probably about enough maybe we go in with a slightly darker tone and just create a shadow almost cast by the kind of horn I don't think the horn is the right word but you know what I mean that kind of little bit there a little bit more shadow and I think what we might do is glaze a little bit of shadow over the eye when it's all dried off the ti tiniest tiniest bit of shadow onto the eye notice how my marks are very very small uh, and very gentle I'm not doing too much with them and I've come to a slightly smaller brush the first part of that whole painting was done with my size zero mop you could use a slightly bigger mop and it wouldn't suffer I'm going to do most of the next part of the painting with my size 8 snapped off because I sat on it synthetic round uh, it couldn't be much more of a standard brush it's by pro art but it just comes to a really nice point and it's got a kind of liveliness to it it's great for doing little markings which is what we're at now so I want to start mixing some marking colors so quinacridone red with a little bit of phthalo it's just going to give us a kind of warmish color I might let's make it a little bit more towards the red so it's not so cool there we go so that's a little bit of each primary with a bias towards red and just enough blue to um, kind of darken it down a little bit and I just want to get an illusion of markings in here I'm really not interested in catching every single marking um, it's just to give the illusion of those markings especially on the shadow side there because we've kind of we've created this story where there's a shadow side and a light side and I'm just kind of following through with that now um, so quinacridone red, almost pure. Let's drop a bit of our darker mix in there. And I just want to create some of these lovely markings that are here. And I'm just, oh, let's make them a bit more red. And I'm just looking at the photo and just letting that guide some very, very simple marks like that. Look, really, really simple markings. And again, we are left with um, just a few darker colors to put in here I like I said I really want to make this the simplest version of our subject this this on a bigger scale I might get more stuck into these markings there might be more to do with them we could do more with them but it's not what I'm after in this one again we've got markings here but I've added more water and I'm using a lighter color so it will look like a dark marking for this area but as it dries and as the water dries it will It'll have a kind of a looser, sorry, a lighter feel to it on that side. I'm not so interested in the markings on the back here. I want to keep that light. Um, we could, I want to cast areas in shadow. So this is when we come to our cobalt blue and we say, right, he's got this lovely collar of white. But in order to create a bit more form, I'm going to take my cobalt blue, which is a slightly warmer, more soft blue than the phthalo and I just want to cast it into shadow a little bit over here a bit too watery just cast it into shadow there and it just it just kind of gives the illusion that that side is disappearing into shadow I want to do a similar thing but I'm gonna do it with um, I think yellow ochre so the yellow ochre is coming out for the first time and what I want to do with it is just glaze over these areas here and cast them so that they're not they're not pure white and just with a very light touch just coming over those and then as we go up and around the bird it's gonna kind of um, come lighter so basically just covering over the whites with in just a couple of areas with a with a yellow ochre and it always looks a bit odd when you first put it on but it will calm down and subdue and we're now starting to get a bit more feeling of light and shadow without actually pushing it too hard and really I just want to bring in some darks now I don't want to do much more with this I quite like it as it is and that's usually a good place to stop when we like it as it is there's a 
my sort of ego wants to make me paint more to just show off or well, not show off but to do more with it when I don't actually need to got to ask what does the painting want not what do I want to do definitely needs a darker tone in here just this little pocket here just to bring it into shadow more and I'm sort of doing it with an almost dry brush and then gonna get some more markings in there little marking there couple of little markings there and really I, my, my tendency is to want to do more but I don't think that it needs it I like it how it is so I'm gonna force myself to keep it that simple I'm gonna put my brush down I'm gonna take my own advice and I'm gonna leave it alone I hope you enjoyed that one. Don't forget you can find me over on Patreon for uh, lots more videos, lots more exclusive content. At a certain tier on Patreon, the Staying Inspired tier, you can join me on a private Facebook group and there are one or two live demos a week, plus you can post your work onto the Facebook group for critique and advice. And then all the other tiers, there's loads of different stuff going on, but there's regularly new exclusive videos being put up there of all different sorts of stuff, predominantly watercolour. Until next time, guys, happy painting, happy living, and I will catch you in the next episode.